All right, day four of my transformation. I just added live rock, sand bed, so the water's still gonna be a little cloudy, but it's clearing up, as you can see. You see some of my rod block formation. Um, still working on it. I'm pretty satisfied with it for the most part. You come from the other angle, that's kind of how it's gonna look. And um, I have a visualization of how I'm going to see the uh, see the um, the corals and stuff. I've got a good idea. If you look at this rock, it's really nice rock. Um, this was actually dry rock there, and then I got mixed combination dry rock and live rock. The difference is really the dry rock is as it says dry. And there's no growth on it. Totally cured and dry, but very poor. It's lots of little holes. I took a drill and drill holes so the fish can go in and out of the rock through holes and there's some crevices for caves and things like that really neat and over here um, see my little um, head goby excuse my little dogs got some little Yorkies running around see them running around me crazy Look. that's May there's Ming May is a whole size dog bigger than Ming but their sisters from the same litter, believe it or not. May was the second to the biggest in the bunch, and Ming was the second to the smallest in the bunch. Ming weighs uh, five pounds, and May weighs uh, eight pounds. So, very sweet dogs, um, but very yappy at times, and very playful, still got the puppy in them. So if I come to the other side of the reef tank, there it is. And I'm, like I said, I'm gonna get the Hydrocoria, Coria, um, power head. I'm gonna get the uh, more powerful one. Get a little bit more flow. Make sure I've got no dead spot, especially with the addition of this rock. I feel like I need to add some more flow. That's a 600. I can. I went up to the 1150, so almost double the flow rate. But I'm also seeing a lot of the particles in suspense, which is good. It lets me know that the water is really flowing around properly. So that lets me know that the power head in position. And the rock structure, I'm going to have no dead spots in my tank, which is very, very key for proper gas change, proper okay. flow rate for the corals, um, the biological filtration, um, stuff like that. So I've got some cleaners, cleaning crew in there that I've had in there for a while. They've been established. Turbo snails, um, astrea snails, and couple of blue legs, red legs. I have one pretty si good sized hermit that I'm going to take out and give him back to the, uh, the, pet, the fish store. And if you haven't done this before, I, what I do is anytime I'm going to make, you know, I'm going to make a decision to take out a uh, you know, specimen out of my tank, I'm going to keep them alive. And what I mean by that is I'm going to first find a new home for it, whether it's a friend, or whether I'm going back to the store. Um, usually, if I go back to the store, they give me a credit um, to purchase something else at the store. So, you know, I, I tend to do that a lot. Um, when I get tired of something or something's just not working around my tank, that's what I do. I don't simply just flush it down the toilet. I, I, I believe in, again, I'm a big conservation advocate for the ocean. Um, I'm a scuba diver. I'm actually an assistant dive scuba instructor. So with SSI, um, after diving the reefs and stuff, I almost got out of the hobby in the industry because of the destruction it's doing to the natural reef systems. However, I felt like I might be able to be a part of the industry and take a more conservative approach. And what I mean by that is advocate on properly setting up your reef aquarium, proper strategies, um, using the proper equipment, um, realize this is an investment, don't go cheap and try to stock it with all kinds of uh, very sensitive specimens because they won't survive in your home aquarium. Remember they're taking them, extracting them directly out of the ocean. I'm also a big advocate for, um, if you can, there's a lot of different uh, saltwater breeds today that are breeding successfully, so they're considered captive raised, farm raised, tank raised. Those are the types of specimens I would prefer purchasing over a specimen they've extracted directly out of the ocean. So for instance, you'll find a lot of different species of clownfish, a lot of different species of clown gobies. Um, so there's, 
and they're getting more and more uh, more and more uh, how should I say this you're, you're, you're able to find um, more and more different specimens that are going to be bred capped in captivity versus extraction from the ocean so but that is still is getting better but it's a long way off so there's a lot of specimens that are directly out of the ocean so for that case we need to when we came out of the ocean we, we need to put them in an environment which they're going to thrive and survive and not simply die in a couple of days um, I've I'm, I'm guilty of this I've lost my share my fair share of fish um, throughout the years in this industry um, and I think now I've gotten to a point where I feel like I'm seasoned, I'm disciplined, I understand the, necess the, the, the necessities, the necessary reasons for proper ecosystem um, planning. Understand what you want in your aquarium, the size of your aquarium, what you can and can't have. How the specimens interact with each other. Um, some fish are very, very aggressive and territorial. Just understand your fish and what you're planning to do. You can't just, oh, it's pretty, I'm gonna throw in my tank. You know, it's not gonna work out that way for saltwater fish. Also, the size of your tank versus the size of your fish. I mean, the rule of thumb is what? For every inch of fish, have a gallon of water. Well, for saltwater, they say every three inches, a gallon of water. Uh, I would say watch your bio load in general. Um, too much bio load, your tank can't support that and will crash on you. You'll be having all kinds of different problems and so forth. So um, definitely plan. And a good fish, a good site to actually get a better understanding of the types of fish that you are looking or interested in, in putting in your tank. Um, LiveAquarium.com provides you know in-depth details about the actual fish, where they're from, their behaviors, requirements, and they also gives you a compatibility chart. And therefore you can check which fish are compatible with the fish that you want to buy and make sure your fish are compatible that you can put in your tank. Yes. It also provides um, recommendations, caution, yes. um, recommend the size of your tank. Please pay attention to that. I mean, yeah, for instance, you get a blue tang and it's a juvenile, and they're recommending tank size 180 gallons. Well, that's they're recommending tank size based on adult size. Why these fish grow? Um, unless you have a plan, a ready plan, I wouldn't get a juvenile blue tank and stick them in a 20 gallon tank and not have a plan for when it gets to adult size. Um, it's very important. Um, you don't want to have a big fish in a small tank. I mean, that's going to not work out too well for you. Anyhow, so we'll be back with more. Um, again, my protein skimmer's up and running, and I've already got skimming action going on. Um, probably can't see because of the dark. Let me turn some light on, see if you can see now. Not really. Well, might be able to see some action there. There's some skimming action going on, but again, um, I really, really like this system. If you notice, I heard a lot of people talking about their inability to have media back here. Let me tell you exactly what I'm doing back here. So I got a protein skimmer right and then I don't know if you can see it back in my tank let me see all I did is I got this chamber right here I'm gonna stick a bunch of the different live rock pieces back there and I'm actually gonna uh, form a, a macroalgae refugium with live rock and macroalgae basically and I'm going to stick a JBG JBA light right here a macro light right here it's, on the, it's, on, it's in order it's on the way and what that's going to do is, is again it's going to provide me a natural um, filtration, biological filtration from a standpoint of using a refugium, which is very, very important. It produces um, different types of foods, live foods for your aquaria. It breaks down, further breaks down nitrates into a more non-toxic waste, um, provides beneficial uh, stabilization to your ecosystem by what you do is at night your macro light is going to be on so this the pH won't be lowered as much um, and everything stays more in balance than it does when when at night when all your light system turns off your, eco balance, your ecosystem gets a little bit out of balance but not to the point of shocking anything but again 
This is going to give you better stability when you add a refugium. So anyway, so I can probably add a refugium. And then beside it, if you notice, I've got a little, there's my um, carbon sponge filter. I've got it where the water's overflowing right into the sponge and then it goes into the return um, chambers. And it's two on each side. On the other side, I have a, uh, have a, a heater in, the, in this chamber and then um, a carbon sponge. So that just replaces the sponge that was in this middle chamber where I now have the protein skimmer. You don't need any bio balls. And below this chamber, um, this protein skimmer, there is about a good four or five inch of, of space between the bottom of the protein skimmer and the bottom of the chamber, which I just threw a carbon, um, a carbon filter bag down there. And I can easily pull it out by hand um, through the middle chamber when I clean out the protein skimmer. And, or I can actually use you know use a pair of tongs or something to pull it out. So because um, it's in a little bag already, so it's pretty cool. Um, so I've got all my mechanical filters without having to buy extra chambers and stick them on the back of here, which I could do. Um, and and so forth, but it's just more money. And so I just uh, you know use some different types of strategies and I'm getting the same effect. So again. My little Watchman yellow, yellow head goby. I love, I love him. I agree. I've got a pistol strip in there, but I, I don't know where he's at. He's kind of buried himself somewhere, and the yellow Watchman goby can't find him. They have already established a symbiotic relationship. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he's going to be down in this crevice because the way that's kind of a mound and already got a hole in there. I think he's down in there, but I'm not 100% sure. And um, he'll come out soon. And again, the water's still a little cloudy, so. Yeah. So there's my tank. We'll be back again, okay? Thanks.